This is Berkshire Family History Presents. Today, our president, Jan Raji, and myself, Vice President Angela Rifkin, will be talking about BFHA, its history, what we offer, and how we present it to the community at large. BFHA is a nonprofit organization dedicated to the information, education, and knowledge about the people and places and history of Berkshire County. And speaking of history, Jan is going to talk about the history of this splendid organization. Jan? Thank you, Angela. It's been almost 50 years since the Berkshire Family History, history Association was created. Um, its creation started with about 35 people in Berkshire County who got together and decided they wanted an organization uh, devoted to the research and history of the families that either lived in, passed through Berkshire County or surrounding areas. So 35 mem people joined initially and they called themselves the Berkshire County Historical Society. And by November of that same year, they were up to 120 members. So it was a fast growing group. Around that time, um, Alex Haley wrote the famous novel Roots, about his roots in Africa. And that kind of did open the way for a lot of people to become interested in uh, family history. So in 1979, the group held its fourth annual meeting. And at that time, they became a much more formally organized group. They um, created a board of directors, they uh, elected officers, and uh, shortly after that, they renamed the group, what we know it today as, which is the Berkshire Family History Association. Now, I am now the sixth president of this organization, and I was preceded by Don Lutz, Jr. Between the beginning and Don, there were other wonderful people who contributed their knowledge, their time, and um, created so many different aspects of the organization, and for them, we're grateful. But I'd like to just talk about Don for a minute. He was the longest running president by far. He was president for 32 years, and he took charge of just about all um, aspects of the group fundraising, membership roles, uh, fundraising, I said. Um, he published also this um, quarterly called Berkshire Genealogist, which we still have today, and they're accessible today, and we can talk more about that later. But the most amazing thing Don did was to create over 10,000 indexes to unindexed or poorly indexed books in the Berkshire Athenaeum's library history collection. Um, we have a very close relationship with the local history department of the Berkshire Athenaeum. Memberships in our organization and donations help us uh, come up with the funds to purchase materials for that department. So we go hand in hand, the local history department and Berkshire Family History Association. So among the resources at that local history department, Angela has more information mm -hmm. about that. Okay, Jen, uh, can we talk a bit about uh, how we work out membership? It's mentioned a few times. Um, membership is a yearly fee, is that correct? That is correct, yeah. And uh, what is that fee, Jen? $15 a year, which is a, quite a bargain. Okay. <laughs> uh, if you compare to other groups. Okay. And uh, um, yes. What does that entitle memberships? Uh, members are entitled to two free hours of research by one of our researchers. 
They're also receiving a quarterly newsletter, which we'll talk about again. It, it replaced the Berkshire genealogist that I just referred to. Yeah. And um, different, perhaps you can think of some, Angela. No, I, they, I think that we just wanted to clarify membership because we are supported by membership. Correct. And uh, $15 seems so little today, but we are working with that number, and it seems to be just a fine way of people remaining connected to Berkshire Family I'll History. Say. Okay, uh, I'm going to talk a little about what we offer there in terms of our very rich archive. Now, because it's such a substantial amount, I'll probably do better just reading it. So I'm going to start with what we have there. Uh, about a month and a half ago, one of our researchers, Margaret Rotty, who is our lead researcher and volunteer, she gave a wonderful visual tour of the local history room, which is available on PCTV, am I correct? And it's also available on YouTube, which again we'll talk about, uh, and our website. So that way you got a feel for what was there and how it's laid out. It's still available, take a look if you're interested. But let me tell you a little bit about our resources. We have town and county published family histories. Now that's considerable when you think about all the great families that have lived here. And they are published, they are in hardcover usually, and it's available, and if you have any relationship to these people who have published, come in and learn more about that family. We have references for most of New England and New York. Now, when I mention New York, because at one time the border between New York and Massachusetts was flexible, okay? And so we are recognizing that some of the resources that are now in Massachusetts may have started in in New York or vice versa. We also have Massachusetts Vital Records to 1850. If you're not familiar with Vital Records, they are usually birth, marriage, and death records. So if you were looking for an ancestor who may have been born, married, died in a town in Berkshire, Berkshire County, you can look up the vital record for that date and place. Uh, we also have church and cemetery records, and they're sometimes the hardest to find. And cemetery records we're going to show you a little bit later because one of our uh, newsletters did a piece on rural cemeteries. We have microfilm of the Berkshire Eagle, 1855 to present, the Pittsfield Sun newspaper, 1800 to 1960, and the North Adams transcript from 1844 to 1895. And I know Jan is a particular fan of newspapers. She finds them a wonderful resource. You can pick up some interesting tidbits, I'll use that word, about people and places, the things they did, the parties they went to, the events that caused a bit of strange, strangeness in their lives. And uh, I know, Jan, for you, newspapers are one of your favorite resources, and I know you've used them for your own family yes. research. Absolutely. Um, I like to think of newspapers as the, well, it was, the social media of the times. Facebook didn't exist, and all the other ways that we connect with people. But those old newspapers, they included everything, that someone lost their horse, <laughs> that some cousin was visiting their cousins in another town. Even the advertisements in the old newspapers can add really an enrichment to your family history. For example, in a document I created about one of my great-grandmothers, I included some ads from the newspaper at the time that she was a newlywed. And it just gave a flavor for what she was paying for groceries then, what dress she might have worn. Um, they're, they're just incredible sources of information that add a richness yes. to your family yes. history. So for that reason, yes, Angela, <laughs> those are very important resources. Yeah, yeah. the microfilm is, is important that we have that because 
where else would we find this information unless it was available on the microfilm that the that is available at the <coughs> Pittsfield Athenaeum local history room and I'm going to keep repeating this because it is open for anyone if you're in the area pop in talk to the people that are there the staff the volunteers you have questions they will help you look for certain pieces of information uh, Take advantage of it. It's your library. Use it. Okay. Um, the newsletter, Jan. Do you want to talk a little bit about the newsletter? Yes, I'm going to show this, and I'm going to hope that uh, if it doesn't, if I'm not too cockeyed here, uh, maybe we can just blow that. Oh boy, I am. Okay. This is what it looks like: the Berkshire Family Historian that is offered to members as part of their membership. You want to talk about that a little bit there? Ah, yes, I do. Um, the Berkshire genealogist that I referenced earlier that was uh, quarterly done for many, many years from 1975 until spring of 2017. Beginning in the winter of 2018, we felt a need to create a new newsletter. The previous genealogy, Berkshire genealogist was a, a, a completely produced by Don Lutz. And with his passing in 2018, it left a huge gap in that form of communicating with members. So Mike Collins, our able editor of this newsletter Angela just showed you, he kind of took this thought that we might have a newsletter and he has skillfully and um, competently created the newsletter Angela is now showing. Mm -hmm. It has uh, features of all sorts inside it. It's different every month. It's not always about cemeteries or whatever. And it, it, we're really proud of it. And we're grateful to Mike Collins for all of his work on it. This is sent, this was created and initially sent to members via, via postal mail. We printed copies, sent them out, postal mail. They got to be very, very expensive. And we realized that a lot of our members receiving this in the mail were also able to find them by going to our website. So now they are posted on our website. The entire collection of back issues is also there. If a member, if someone becomes a member for the first time tomorrow, they have access to the whole collection of those newsletters. Uh, the members only section of our website where this is included mm -hmm. as well as other things mm -hmm. is entered by use of a password yeah. and members are sent a password yeah. every January it yep. changes. So um, that yeah, we're going to talk yeah. about that but I wanted to show again if mm -hmm. I can. Uh, I'm not too That's good at That's this obviously. Right yeah. Okay here's an example. It was re retracing genealogy from an old obituary. And Michael looked at that obituary, which you can see in the newspaper, which I have my hand over, which is not very helpful to you. But you get an idea of what we offer. And uh, he was able to trace or help someone trace uh, some genealogy from an obituary. Another piece that Michael has done is, and I think this came up before we talked about rural cemeteries, okay, and often rural cemeteries have gotten lost. Uh, sometimes they're buried in behind housing developments, and uh, we don't know where they are. So Michael, or Collins, Michael Collins, our editor, has made a lot of journeys around looking for these rural cemeteries and the fascinating facts that he's able to find. So that's just a few articles that we have from the newsletter. Absolutely. Okay. And just to mention, dear Don Lutz, one more time. Yes, please do. The, the winter 2019 issue of that newsletter did a lovely feature on Don. And anyone who is a member or becomes a member and can access the newsletter, I think it's a really worth reading. Okay. okay. Jan, you mentioned a few minutes ago about our website. And I'm hoping the address will come up mm -hmm. on screen right now, uh, BerkshireFamilyHistory.org. We created this 
Right, Jen? We created it oh, several years back. Mm -hmm. And we recognize that websites are the way to go today for dispersing of information and ideas and learning who would be interested in this. So the website offers several items. We can use it for research forms. For instance, if a member would like someone to do one of our researchers to do research, there's a form there for submitting information. If a member chooses to renew yearly, it's a very simple form to use, and it's all done, as many sites are. You just give your credit card, it's done, and you're renewed again for another year. If you want to become a new member, simple form to fill out, use the same procedure, credit card, pay the 15, and then you're ready to roll. Once you remember, you receive a password to, and Jan mentioned this before, to uh, access to the newsletter. Now, there are other items on the website, aside from information. We have a wonderful section called Stories. And Jan and I both believe that there's more to history than just facts and figures. There are stories about the people they lived here, what they did and how they did, and how they managed their lives and what went on within those lives. So these stories have been contributed by many people. Some of them are members. Some of them have just decided that we have good stuff to tell you. And we publish those stories in, on the website. So a brand new viewer can look at that website and learn a little bit more than just the facts and figures and lists that I just spoke about earlier. So for me, it is, as, and you use this term, it, it enriches the entire genealogy search or acknowledgement of people and places. So the website um, has some intriguing finds as well. Uh, the, uh, it offers access to our YouTube. Jan, you want to explain how we get on to YouTube from our website? Okay. Yeah, um, it's, it made us feel very modern when we <laughs> could say BFHA has a YouTube channel now. Um, in order to access the YouTube channel for anyone, you do not have to be a member of Berkshire Family History Association to, to do this, you go to the website, which has been shown on the screen a couple times now, and across the top, there's a series of tabs to choose from. If you go to the resources tab, you will see at the bottom of the list that comes up our YouTube channel. And you just click on that and you are immediately brought to our channel where all of the things that we have uh, put there can be viewed. One of them being the uh, library tour that Margaret Roddy produced, showing uh, people what's in the local history department, how it's arranged. And that's, that's something I would encourage anybody yeah. to watch, because yeah. it's, it's just a great <laughs> overview of the wonders of the Berkshire Family Athenaeum's local history department. Um, also, all the YouTube, uh, all the videos that we've produced here mm -hmm. are available. That's there. right. So yeah. you can look at every video that we did here from the past several months and just take a look. Uh, you may have missed it the first time, but it's there. And it just gives you more and more information That's about right. some of our videos. That's right, exactly. And um, as Angela said, the videos we produce here in this Pitts Pittsfield community television studio are posted on our website, I mean on our YouTube channel, as well as other things that we either have created ourselves, like Margaret's tour, or things that may come from other sources. But it, it's really worth a look, and I think it would be inspiring to someone who may, <laughs> might be considering delving more into their family's history or joining our organization. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's, a, it's a nice addition to what yes, we offer. Yes, yes. And as you said earlier, we're sort of joining the way of the future here, getting on and using more technology, uh, which for us has been, I have to say personally, a learning experience. But it's very worthwhile because we have an opportunity to reach more members. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, 
an organization that you may be familiar with. It's called the uh, United States Census, and I'm going to be doing a program on that later on, and not probably next year. Um, some of you may remember the Silvio Conti building on Dan Fox Drive in Pittsfield. It was used as a resource for the National Archives and Records Administration, and it also had a walk-in room where people could go in, ask for help, use the computers, but the value of that particular walk-in facility was the thousand, yes, over a thousand rolls of microfilm. <laughs> now, what happened to them? After the, that facility closed, all that microfilm was sent over to the Pittsfield Athenaeum and is stored in the basement. Now, much of it has been done, uh, copied through other sources, such as Ancestry, but there are some amazing bits of microfilm that you will not find anywhere, or if you do, it takes such an enormous amount of digging, you'd probably require professional help. So I'm going to list some of the things that are available in that facility that the Pittsfield Library still has. So aside from the usual census and immigration, which is available mostly on Ancestry and other websites, it has city directories from several cities from 1927. What's a city directory? Do you remember the old telephone books? Does anybody have them anymore? <laughs> anyhow, I think we use them to doorstops. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, the city directory is fascinating because it gives information about where people lived or had businesses and how they moved about. So if you're looking for somebody specifically in an area, uh, you begin to look at city directories, and it gives you a sense of where people are situated and any businesses that they may have. They also have another find, which I did not know about until I was there as a volunteer, American Revolutionary Pensions. Now, um, after the American Revolution, it was determined by Congress that the soldiers that fought there were, de were entitled to a pension. But they didn't quite know how to do this because we were a brand new country and they, this was a new format for them. So what they did was they had to inquire from every person that associated with the veteran to find out their history, where they served, who they're related to, where they lived. They are substantial sources of information about that time in history, which we often don't know a lot about. So it's good to know that it's available if you had an ancestor that goes back to that Revolutionary War period. Certainly, take a look. He might have been entitled to a pension, and you can look at that through the microfilm and maybe discover who he was related to, who his family was, and where he served. There's also indexes to the American Civil War as well. Uh, the American Civil War in the mid-1800s, uh, the soldiers were again entitled to pensions. Now, this is information that's out there but it's not as easily accessible through the usual websites. And I have to quote Ancestry because that's the grandma of all of us. <laughs> I think that's most people get onto that site first, and it's worth, well worthwhile. Uh, anyhow, if you do come in and you want to know more about the uh, resources of the microfilm from them, uh, any person there will be giving you information and telling you more about how to access it. The microfilm readers are available for anybody who comes in. So, Jan, I think we've tried to cover as much as we can. Uh, what do you think? Do you think we've done, or you have something simmering there that you want to talk about? No, I think we've covered it quite well, and anyone who wants more information certainly can contact us uh, through email, stop in the library, um, leave questions there for us when, when we're there. Um, one other very quick thing, it's a little teaser for the future. I referenced earlier that um, Don Lutz had cr created this massive index for many years, that index was available in-house on the server of the library. Somewhere down the line, 
it is our hope, and the plan has started, that this will be available to the public, this index. Yes. So stay tuned. That is something <laughs> to look forward to. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jan. Yeah, we're all looking forward to that. Um, that will be such a help just putting people's names in this in, from the index and finding where they are in the resources. Uh, we hope that you continue watching Berkshire Family History Presents, and we also hope that today you got a better idea of who and what we are, where we are, and please come join us. It's your library. Take advantage of it. <laughs> we can offer it to you, and there are no costs for any of this research in the library. The only cost would be, if you choose to become a member, it's a minimal cost of $15 a year. And we are supported by membership monies. So thank you again. Stay tuned for our next program. And we will talk to you more as the next year, I can hardly believe it's another mm -hmm. year ahead, that we will be winding down this year. We're going to probably see you again in January and do some more talks about what we do and uh, offer more information, education, and history about Berkshire Family History Presents. Thank you.